You cannot have generational wealth if you do not have a family structure. Welcome back, family. Uh, thank y'all for joining me again. Appreciate y'all tuning in. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Um, greatly appreciate that. Uh, hope you enjoy your Valentine's Day. It is the Monday following uh, Valentine's Day. So I uh, hope you guys were able to enjoy uh, your loved ones. I know I was able to. So, yeah. So today, um, I actually at first struggled to find what I was going to um, kind of talk about today. But then, I think it was like late last week or over the weekend, a story came out about a young sister in Liberty Township, Ohio. A uh, sister by the name of uh, Shayna Bell, who was 24, she was arrested um, for leaving her two young children in a hotel room while she was at work, uh, working at what I believe they describe as a pizza parlor or like a, you know, some type of pizza place. And the reason that I kind of fell upon my humble view and opinion, it kind of speaks to some of the, the issues that are just really prevalent and, and, and just uh, bulging at the scenes of our community. And, you know, and with no disrespect to that sister at all, because I think that we can all conclude that at the end of the day, she was really uh, trying to do her best, whatever, you know, right or wrong. Uh, she, she was trying to make the best of what she had, you know, the obligation and the need to go to work, but then also having uh, somewhere safe for her children to be during that time. And it was also saying within that story that, uh, you know, she had arranged previously for somebody to check on them every hour. Uh, I don't know if that happened or not. They, they didn't really give any detail on that. But it, it kind of speaks to the lack of, you know, one support. A lot of our people have to go throughout life without, uh, be it from family or be it from friends. And then also the the, the protection or in, in, in you know, the, the absence of the black male figure sometimes, if you will, the, the protection that the man brings, and whether that be uh, the father of those children or Mrs. Bell's father or whatever the case may be, uh, being absent, some, sometimes these, uh, these type of things can happen. And, and it's not just about, you know, uh, a man being absent, her mother being absent, any of these different uh, resources uh, or people uh, in her life that could be used as resources uh, that, you know, so many of us do have, but also so many of us don't. And not having full and complete families to be there to properly support and raise our children and be there for them in the capacity that they really need to do well and be well in life. And so it was saying that it doesn't say what time she left the children alone, but it said the police found them around 6 p.m. and the oldest who was uh, 10, the oldest child was 10, the youngest daughter was, was two. It said the oldest child was expecting her mother back uh, around 10 p.m. that evening. You know, that's just really scary to know that those, those children that young had to be left alone for, you know, will just say, you know, potentially up to eight hours, you know, a typical work shift for nine hours, uh, you got an hour lunch or whatever the case may be, but yeah, uh, and having to do that and who's to say that that was the first time that she was put in a position to make such a tough and difficult choice as a mother to, you know, leave your, your children um, at such tender and young ages to go to work so that you can provide for them. Um, you know, and that for me, so many times it just speaks to the fact of, you know, you why that two parent household can be so important. And, and uh, not just that, but just support systems and surrounding people with support. You know, who, who knows what this uh, is caused by, but you know, one thing it also talks to uh, and speaks to is just the economical state of our people to be in such desperate conditions where we have to choose between parenting and providing and, and be in such a place where uh, where that choice can endanger your access to your children, your rights to your children, or, you know, just put your children themselves at risk uh, from potential danger and predators and things like that. To be in a position where, you know, I gotta have money, you know, so that that's without doubt. I gotta have money to feed them. I gotta have money to clothe them. Uh, I gotta have money for myself to feed myself. And then when you, it's time to go to work, you were like, well, who's gonna watch you? You know? And then it's like, well, if, well, if I don't go to work, we can't eat. 
And if they living in that hotel room, if I don't go to work, I can't pay, you know, for the night cost of the hotel or, you know, however long we need to stay here, whatever the case may be. So, that, I mean, that's a very, very tough position to be in. And again, that's why I say I, I don't judge that young lady or cast her out to the wolves. One, she is young. She's 24. And then also it's just tough trying to make it uh, with very little. And also, you know, talking about that, she's 24 with two children, one of which being 10. That means she had her first child at 14, which potentially says that she conceived that child. We don't know, but potentially she conceived that child at 13. And, you know, having our, our young daughters and things like that being sexually active and exposed to uh, such things that could lead to them taking on such great responsibilities and forced to make such decisions. That, that, that's not to say the children are, are bad or anything like that. Proud father um, and a young father at that. You know, I had my first child at 16, not much older than her. So I'm, I'm speaking from my own experience too, and I'm just kind of using her as a backdrop to also talk to our entire pop, you know community. Uh, because my uh, reality obviously isn't that foreign. If I'm, you know, now at, at 33 reading a story about a young woman who uh, fell into some of the same pitfalls of life that I fell into myself at, at a very young age. Okay, but anyway, back to back to the story at hand. So, you know, she's 14 and, and trying to figure out how to be a mother. And for so many reasons, there's so many just different things that are are wrong with this and you know the biggest one of the first things i'll say that for a woman biologically it's not healthy to have a child that young uh you know you, you that's a high risk pregnancy from jump not to mention you know who was responsible for raising you where you were not you know watched over in a sense where you know you you had that much freedom to 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 do certain things and i and i know you know kids are sneaky i definitely was and so this can't always blame it on the parent or say it happened from a lack of them trying but i think it's a fair critique to to want to want to know answers to those and, and question those things and and then also want to ask yourself to the individuals you know am i present enough in my child's life am i uh teaching them certain values and certain things because you know you, you think about being 14 and, and and giving in the sex so to speak it's really more times than not just forms of peer pressure and you know is your child solid enough internally to not succumb to peer pressure or not succumb to uh different things and different pressures around them and it also goes to things that they've been exposed to you know or are you exposing them to a life that's hypersexualized that has music that suggests certain things or encourage them to dance in certain ways to be uh over sexual if you will and, and, and especially at, at young ages, you know, I just think at, at, at 14, sex should be the furthest thing from, from our, our future's mind. You know, I say our future because, you know, that, that those children are our future. And if they don't have the opportunity to, to grow and, and educate themselves before having children themselves, how can they instruct those children? It's just going it, to, it almost becomes an echo chamber of toxic and detrimental behavior that kind of compounds on itself and reinforces itself. I think it's, it's very critical that we, in our boys' lives too, because the flip side of that is I remember being, you know, a young teenager and how, you know, how we always, amongst the group of us, promoted, you know, who could get the most girls, sleep with the most girls, you know, who had the highest number and things like that. And again, you know, uh, it's, it's just as dangerous for our boys as well. We're allowing them to put themselves in positions of great responsibility to be fathers when, you know, they haven't even mastered being a man yet or mastered being a boy yet in, in so many ways. And, it, and if we don't kind of uh, get back to uh, really installing values and things into our children, I think this is going to really be a problem because it's not so much as just the, the the having the child it's the you you having you got undeveloped people having babies and and so the parent never gets developed mentally or otherwise and then the baby in turn it becomes a cycle and i know that's not true for everybody but a lot of times it is true uh for a lot of people I mean, we got some anomalies we got some great people that come from these stereotypical or or trying situations if you will they walk away great you know my situation is not necessarily bad or anything like that even though i made these decisions 
but everybody don't come out that way. And I, I'm not foolish enough to think that. And I don't think you should be either. And I definitely think we need to get back to putting a lot more value in, for one, teaching our children to protect themselves in a sexual environment. So, you know, we got to be real about the, the realities that we live in. So if nothing else, we need to be preparing our children, having talks about protecting yourself and, and being a responsible, sexually active adult or, or a person uh, in this world because your health is at risk and your future is at risk. You know, when you enter someone or allow someone to enter you in that way and, you know, children ain't the only thing that can come from this. You know, there, there's a, uh, you can get friends that'll, that'll, that'll hang with you for the rest of your life if you're not careful. Uh, so yeah, I, I think it's extremely, I mean, that goes for everybody. There's no age limit to that. But as it comes to our children having these babies at such young ages, and it almost guarantees that there's not gonna be a family. You know, you talking about, for one, two children have came together and had a child and they don't even know themselves. So although they might agree and, and, and get along great now, as they mature and grow into the adults they'll be, they might not see eye to eye. And so now this child, at, you know, the offspring of these two individuals is now, you know, almost destined to be uh, without the traditional family. And the reason I bring that up is because, for instance, if this young woman and the father of her children were still together, it would seem that he would be able to watch him during this time, or you would assume so, or vice versa, that she would be able to watch him while he worked or whatever worked best for them. But one thing that makes me think that they're not on the greatest terms is because it said in the article, one of the articles that after she was arrested, the children were released to their father, which, I mean, he could have been at work as well, which is possible. And, you know, he just got off and became available after she was arrested. But, it, it, you know, I don't know. But, but what I am getting at is that us, for one, not educating our young teenagers, male and female, about the risk and the things and the responsibilities that come along with sex and being sexually active. Then two, the trauma that the lack of a, of a full family has on that child, potentially uh, long lasting. Because I would even question, uh, what's her name, Shayna? Shayna, Miss Shayna Bell. I would even question the home that she came from. You know, was it a two parent home? Particularly, was there a man, a father uh, present? Because it's just certain things that honestly, I mean, so that, that might be controversial to say. And that might, uh, and it, it ain't true across the board, but in more cases than not, uh, I believe what we see is that uh, there are certain things that male presence gives, especially to our young girls being out able to vet decent and quality young men. And you also think about and consider the fact that most young women, and this goes for boys too, I'm just, we're talking about the girls, so that's what I'm going with. Most young women that have a father present or a man, it doesn't have to be biological, but a, you know, a strong man that's present in their life day in and day out. Most women will go out and seek a man with those qualities. And likewise for men, men that have good mothers that do, do good things and things like that, they will seek out women with those qualities. And so, but when there's no mother present, you know, what is that man, what is that boy or, or a young man uh, thought to look for in a woman? He doesn't know. Cause he hasn't he hasn't seen an example of one, uh, and, and vice versa with the with the young woman. What is she supposed to expect when she goes out into the world and looks for a man? She doesn't know. She hasn't seen an example of one. Maybe an over sensationalized version of one on television or some gossipy uh, relationship that she sees on some blog post or something like that that just has all this uh, over inflated drama. Excuse me, y'all, for the noise. Uh, snowing here i'm trying to clean my windshield but overinflated drama and just messiness that really undercuts the value of i'm gonna say black love because so many times these, these uh shows highlight us uh but undercuts the value of black love or even the sanctity of it just by all this bs drama and, and fighting but yeah they don't have examples of, of what love looks like they don't have examples of male and female interaction for that matter. It almost drains and spills over to so many different things because uh, it's so impactful. Like it impacts individuals on every level. And I, and I speak from a place of not having my um, biological father in the home most of my life. Like there were times when my dad was living in the home. Cause that's what I'm talking about, living in the home and being present. Because uh, even me being a father, like, you know, being a baby daddy, it's different 
when you have day in, day out access to your children and vice versa, your children have day in, day out access to you to be able to see mommy, daddy, how they operate, how they function amongst one another, how they operate as a team, how they do this, how they do that. You are giving them a roadmap. You know, when there's a family, for an example, for the child to look at it observe, you are giving them a roadmap on what to expect, what to look for, how the operation and dynamic of a relationship and a partnership works. And when they don't have that as an example, I mean, you see the result. Look at how uh, traumatic and dramatic our relationships are, whether it be personal ones that you see live out on Facebook or even the ones of our stars that you see live out on, uh, on different blog sites. Like, uh, it, it's so unfortunate that so many times that we cannot maintain the family and that we cannot, you know, it's always a baby mama, baby daddy situation. And I know that's, that doesn't apply for everybody, but it's still at the rate that it's at currently for us is too much. Our, our children need families. We need to build legacies. And, it, you know, it's hard to build a legacy or an empire. You know, we talk about being great and doing these great things and having wealth. It takes a family for wealth. Uh, because wealth is trans, you know, it's called generational wealth. You cannot have generational wealth if you do not have a family structure. You have to have, you know, a wife to then have your children. This is, and you know, this is how you immortalize yourself, so to speak. And then you groom your children. You instill in them the, the, the thoughts, the principles, the, the, the business tactics, everything, how to how to run and, and, and continue and grow this empire that you have, have uh, created for them. You can't do that from afar. You have to be in that child's life, and it, it, it takes day in and day out to do that. It, it's not a weekend or a bi-weekend type thing that, that you're able to accomplish. And, um, you know, so when we talk about these things, we have got to get back to maintaining relationships uh, with ourselves, with our women, with our men, to be able to value each other in those relationships more. And I'm not telling you to stick with anybody that's abusing you or anything like that. But what I am telling you to do is that when you are committed to a person, be committed and especially when you're talking about uh, having having children and things like that I think it's pretty well documented the impacts of, of having a full home and, and and not having one and I would even urge that it's even more critical to uh, black people because our homes have been targeted targeted and disrupted so much uh, yeah like we we really we need to make an overt effort to have families, an overt effort to build successful generational wealth. Uh, and, and that can't happen with, with baby daddy, baby mama culture. But not to get too far off on that tangent, let's get back to the, the topic at hand. But yeah, like I was, before I got off, I, I would question the family that, that our uh, uh, sister Bill came from. And you know, was it an example of a how a man loves a woman because uh, I don't know that she would have fell for those same tricks that you fall for, you know, at 14 when a, a young man tries to get you out your, your goodies type of thing. And, you know, and also question the household of that young man. Was he in a, a household that he, where he saw a man respecting a woman and maybe not uh, trying to get those things from her without loving her first or, or whatever the case may be. And so, I, yeah, again, uh, especially at that young age, I think uh, sex is used as such a bargaining chip and such a such a thing to uh, prove yourself amongst your peers to your, you know, your at the time lover or what the case may be, you know, uh, you know, back in the day, if you love me, you'll do it type thing. And so I think that's just very dangerous and dangerous to us because we're creating these kids, uh, bringing them into this world without families bringing them to this world in, di in distress situations. That's a, that's the, another big thing, a distress situation. You're not even economically ready for a child, but uh, we choose to have the baby. I'm pro-choice, you, you choose your own destiny, but to, to me, it really doesn't make a lot of sense to bring in a child into a world where you're already struggling. Like, that don't add up, right? You think you're more noble to subject a to a, a, a life, a, a struggle, and that, that's not to say that that child can't turn around and be great, but what would be great is that if uh, having a child was an actual planned idea instead of some accident or some surprise that just popped up in your life, 
uh, something that you plan for that is intentional. That way, the way that you bring them up can be intentional. That way, the way that, you know, you mold them and develop them can be intentional. Instead of this, oh, shit, I had a one night stand, I'm pregnant. I'm going to keep it. And I'm not just ragging on the ladies because it's the same with the males, too. You, 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 you just carelessly throwing yourself out there, throwing your seed out there. Yeah. And, and for the males, like, if you want to have something great, one of the biggest wealth killers is having your seed spread all around the city, type, so to speak, or, or having all these different children. Trust me, I know. Like, And, and so I'm not speaking from a, of a place of, of just uh, some, some stuff I read. Like, this, I know the impact that it has to have to support and, and keep up with multiple households. I know the type of position it could put you in to, uh, you know, try to support children from afar, because I tell you what, it's a lot cheaper to, to support a child that's in your house. When you eat, when you buy food, that child eats, that child is fed. When you pay your rent, that child has a, a roof over his head versus now you're, you're paying money to a different household because you and the mom not together. So you, so the, the cost is not the same. You contributed to a whole different house whole, you know, at this point versus picking up because of the additional mouth versus a whole nother household. And so, yeah, like if you want to, you, you have to be sexually responsible. If, if you plan on having great things in life, especially as a man creating things like you, you having your, your seeds spread out, they're going to, like you can't have nothing great in all these, these different loose uh, relationships and, and children everywhere you got to button that up tighten that up because it, it's a, a financial liability you're leaving yourself open for people to and i don't want to say people like they're open no, you know like these are your children but you're leaving yourself open to be dictated i guess in a way on how you will support them by outside forces and especially you know when you're not able to maintain the family where you know supporting them is just an extension of yourself versus uh like i said before a different household so just something to be uh just mindful of we need to definitely get back to having families and the importance of family having mommy and daddy in the house and just the importance of both of their roles you know the the nurturing of the mom she's the educator she's you know just she's the nucleus that makes everything work and you know you got your dad the protection the leader the you know uh all these different things and so you know our children need it all and and we should not we need to stop normalizing making it okay that they don't like again i'm, I'm talking as a person that comes from a single parent household and looking back i can see that although great things great people can come from these situations it is not the ideal situation and so we really need to focus on, um, in my humble opinion, putting that black family back together, making it a priority, and then also just being responsible sexually and otherwise, and then also being responsible parents. Anyway, guys, just to wrap up, I just appreciate y'all tuning in. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share. As always, uh, in the description box, I'll leave a link to my Weeble, my Cash App, and also my Robinhood. So join me on my investing journey. I hope you're invested. You can start with as little as a dollar, especially on platforms like Robinhood, Cash App. You can invest and start with a dollar. Uh, yeah, but peace. I appreciate y'all and love. Bye.